What is abundance? Abundance from the root Hebrew word shefa. It means to abound. It speaks of great resources. It refers to plentifulness, affluence, lavishness, infinity, a great stockpile of wealth. There's a love of and expand your expectation for there is a sound of abundance that is about to hit the house there's an outpouring of abundance of abundance you have been walking through the tenets of the supernatural and how to enjoy god's blessings it's now time to be ushered into your season of abundance Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 9 says, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your womb. Holy Hill Chapel Assemblies of God presents Season of Abundance, a financial breakthrough conference made just for you. We will meet from Tuesday, August 31 to Sunday, September 5, 2021 at the Faith Cathedral behind the Ghana Commercial Bank at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. Join us at 6 p.m. each night for the unadulterated word of God through his servant, Dr. Kwejo Bempa, for your season of abundance. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Holy Hill AG and on YouTube at Reverend Kwejo Bempa. It is your season of abundance. Of abundance, of abundance. You have been walking through the tenets of the supernatural and how to enjoy God's blessings. It's now time to be ushered into your season of abundance. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 9 says, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your womb. Holy Hill Chapel Assemblies of God presents Season of Abundance, a financial breakthrough conference made just for you. We will meet from Tuesday, August 31 to Sunday, September 5, 2021 at the Faith Cathedral behind the Ghana Commercial Bank at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. Join us at 6 p.m. each night for the unadulterated word of God through his servant, Dr. Kwejo Bempa, for your season of abundance. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Holy Hill AG and on YouTube at Reverend Kwejo Bempa. It is your season of abundance. is abundance abundance from the root hebrew word shefa it means to abound it speaks of great resources it refers to plentifulness affluence lavishness infinity a great stockpile of wealth there's an overflow and expand your expectation for there is a sound of abundance that is about to hit the house you have been walking through the tenets of the supernatural and how to enjoy god's blessings it's now time to be ushered into your season of abundance Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 9 says, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your womb. Holy Hill Chapel Assemblies of God presents Season of Abundance, a financial breakthrough conference made just for you. We will meet from Tuesday, August 31 to Sunday, September 5, 2021 at the Faith Cathedral behind the Ghana Commercial Bank at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. 
Join us at 6 p.m. each night for the unadulterated word of God through his servant, Dr. Kwejo Bempa, for your season of abundance. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Holy Hill AG and on YouTube at Reverend Kwejo Bempa. It is your season of abundance. from the root hebrew word shefa it means to abound it speaks of great resources it refers to plentifulness affluence lavishness infinity a great stockpile of wealth there's another flow get ready and expand your expectation for there is a sound of abundance that is about to hit the house thank you jesus because he is good Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Help me sing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody lift your voice. Let's sing it. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and sing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
your voice celebrate him come on give him glory give him praise come on give him glory give him praise somebody lift it up lift it up lift it up lift it up clap your hands and celebrate Jesus in this place oh celebrate Jesus you brought handkerchief you brought handkerchief come on lift it up let's celebrate Jesus one more time thank you Jesus Young uh -huh. come on. Come on, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Hey. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless your holy name. For you, for you, you are great. You're the You're the miracle of faith. There is no one else like you. No one else like you. There, there is no one else like you. For you, you are great. We bless As your we holy bless name. Your holy you name. deserve the glory, glory and the honor. And the honor. Somebody celebrate. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we bless As your we holy bless name. Holy For name. you are great. You're the miracle. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. No, no, no one else. There is Say, Jehovah. All you can say, Jehovah. 
somebody celebrate. Come on, say, only you can say what no man can say, Jehovah. Only you can say what no man can say, Jehovah. Only you are capable, so so reliable God. Celebrate. Only you are capable, so so reliable God. Only you are capable, so so reliable God. Only you can do, only you can do, Jehovah. So so reliable God. So live right. Only you are capable. So so reliable God. Say, awesome God. Uncommon favor, uncommon favor. You, please, you may be seated. Daddy, thanks for the privilege. I'm grateful. We are taking our scripture from Colossians chapter 4, verse number 12. It says, Epaphras, who is one of you, servant of Christ, saluted you always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with me, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Jude chapter 1, verse number 23. And others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. When we rise, this is going to be our line of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, establish all our new converts very strong in faith and in the church. Father, bring back all old members and backsliders who 
are no more coming. Jesus appeared to them in strange encounters and saved them from worldly influence back to the kingdom. Kindly be on your feet and begin to whisper into the ears of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, establish all our new converts very strong in faith and in the church. Father, bring back all old members and backsliders who are no more coming. Jesus, appear to them in strange encounters and save them from worldly influence back to the kingdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, establish all our new converts, very strong in faith and in the church. Father, bring back all old members and backsliders who are no more coming. Jesus appeared to them in strange encounters and saved them from worldly influence back to the kingdom. Lebron dobo shikiti di bidi ante ne 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 bran dobo shikiti di bidi ante de 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 ibanduni bidi ante de 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 santu di bidi ante na 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 da da bo dobo shikiti di bidi ante de 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 lebron dobo shikiti di bidi ante de 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 abatu pakata na ba dobo shikiti di bidi ante de 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 abanduni bidi ante da 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 bo shikiti di bidi ante de 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 ibanduni ne ba da ba da ba to ne ma da ba da ba da ba da ba in Jesus precious name we have prayed with thanksgiving you may be seated on common favor it's season of abundance 2021 somebody make some noise unto Jesus let's also honor his chosen vessel our father Reverend Dr. Kojo Boatin Bempa thank you daddy and mommy for this privilege in a short while we shall be lifting our voices praying for souls reading from the Psalm 126 verse 1 to 3 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing then said they among the heathen the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad when we rise we shall be praying, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, gather multitudes from every corner of the globe into 2021 season of abundance. Send us your life-transforming word that saves. Prosper every worshiper by turning our luck into abundance. You want to rise on your feet and violently declare, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, gather multitudes from every corner of the globe into 2021 season of abundance. Send us your life-transforming word that saves. Prosper every worshiper by turning luck into abundance. Somebody lift your voice. Gather multitudes from every corner of the globe in the 2021 season of abundance. Send us your life-transforming word that saves and prosper every worshiper by turning our luck into abundance. Gather multitudes into this year's season of abundance. Turn luck into abundance. Gather multitudes from every corner of the globe in the 2021 season of abundance. Prosper every worshiper by turning our luck into abundance. Send us your life transforming word that saves. Le kara sata yada, he sata kaya dada, he akara sota yada dada, he pasata yada dada, he sata yada dada. Your prayer is gathering multitudes. Le kaya sata yada dada, 
Hepasata Kayadara, Yakala Satayala, that's the one you begin to wave and thank the Lord even for us a prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Please resume your seats. We'd like to remind our cherished followers that we are live on Fox TV and also streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Enjoy the service. On common favor. Church, let's appreciate Jesus, the owner and the builder of our church. Let's also honor his servant, our father, the Reverend Dr. Kodjobuatin Bempa. Let's appreciate the first lady. We are still praying and we are considering a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 8, the verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. Psalm 118, the verse 25. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. When we rise, this is going to be our line of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit come and teach us with understanding how we can enjoy heaven's abundance on earth. Let this season of abundance conference bring each worshiper into their prosperity. You want to rise on your feet with me? Watch your screens and pray this prayer in the ears of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit come and teach us with understanding how we can enjoy heaven's abundance on earth. Let this season of abundance conference bring each worshiper into their prosperity in the name of Jesus. Somebody lift up your voice and cry out unto the Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit come and teach us with understanding how we can enjoy heaven's abundance on earth. Let this season of abundance conference bring each worshiper into their prosperity in the name of Jesus. But thou shalt remember that it is I, the Lord, that give the power to get well. Lift up prayer, somebody. Father, send now prosperity unto every participant of this year's seasons of abundance. Let your spirit come and teach us with understanding how we can enjoy heaven's abundance on earth. Let this year's season of abundance conference bring each worshiper into their prosperity. You want to lift your right hand, begin to wave it, and appreciate Jesus for answers to this prayer. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Daddy, thanks very much for the privilege. We want to also remind you that we are also live on Port Bean. You can also tune in there. God bless you. Let's honor Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church. And thank God for the life of my father. Amen. Discouraged. I see you fighting all the demons in your life that have wrecked every carnage. And don't be dismayed. I know you think that your dreams and everything that you hoped for seem to be late.
see. Looks like your problems don't seem to go nowhere. Just take a deep breath. People talk about you when they don't know you. It's got you down and really, really stressed. Don't tell me you don't know the trouble that I've been going through. You have no no say. We all go through the same thing you they go through too. Who told you the lie that when you fall is the end of your life? I had a whisper from above. I pray it opens up your eyes. Broken pencils still write, so keep on writing. And fallen soldiers still rise, so keep on fighting. One day you'll lift up your eyes to the skies and your light will be shining. One day you'll win, yeah. One day you'll win. Broken pencils still write. So keep on writing The fallen soldiers still rise So keep on fighting One day you lift up your eyes to the skies And your light to be shining One day you'll win Yeah, one day you'll win Second verse. News around this life is not fair. Greed is all we see. You gave your heart to the wrong folk. They broke it. Now you put it on fleek. Fake life on Instagram and Snapchat got you feeling ungrateful. My sister, if you could see the real them, you know you're being a grateful. You wrote a paper and fail. Sit down and write it again. One day you go kill him. He broke your heart and you cried. Give love another try. True love will heal him. Listen, I'm not trying to look down on your problems. No, 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 no. I just know, say, you don't know how you go to be solved them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allow me to introduce you to someone I know. He's a specialist in handling cases and issues where don't blow, blow, blow. So if you fell, just rise. Do you hear me? If you fell, just rise. Don't stay on the ground. If you fell, just rise. And wipe the tears from your eyes. If you fell, just rise. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the, tears. Wipe the tears from your eyes. If you fell, just rise. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears, my brother. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Wipe the tears, my sister. If you fell, just rise. Wipe the tears from your eyes. Broken pencils, broken pencils still rise. So keep on writing. Falling soldiers still rise. Falling soldiers still rise. So keep on fighting. Yeah. One day you lift up your eyes to the skies and your light will be shining. Yeah. One day you win. One day you win. One day. I said your wedding bells go ring. One day. Hey. One day you win. One day. That paper, you pass it again. One day you win. First class is calling your name. One day you win. International scholarship is coming. One day. One day you come out of your own house. One day, one day you sub go ride your own car. One day, don't give up. One day you win. One day, don't give up. One day you win. One day you win. Your album go hit. One day you win. Your ministry go blow. One day you win. This heaven you go make up. One day you win. Don't give up. One day you win. One day, don't give up. One day you win. One day. One day you win. One day, yeah, yeah. One day you win. One day, yeah. One day you win. One day, you yeah, one day you one day you your haters win. will see you on TV. One day you your win. enemies will see you on Instagram. One day you People win. will know that God has done it. One day you 
the fixer of your life, he will fix it. One day you win. 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 Broken hands. Broken hands. One day you win. One day you win. One day you win. One day you win. Yeah. One day you win. Broken pencils. Fallen soldiers to rise. Fallen soldiers still rise. To keep on fighting. Yeah. One day you lift up your eyes to the skies and your light will be shining. One day you win. One day you win. One day you win. Thank you. On Common Favor Church, shall we with a clap celebrate Jesus, the owner and the builder of this church and the architect of our lives. And I want you to help me. Let's honor God's servant, our father. Put your hands together for him. I will salute our first lady. Wow. Broken pencils still right and it is so because they are in the hands of God the master potter and architect of our lives and that's why we always need him to fix the broken parts of our lives and thank God that in this conference he wants to fix broken pockets I thought you were going to clap for that. Yeah. He's going to fix any bank account that is broken and leaking. God is bringing us healing and restoration to our businesses and finances tonight. Let me hear a resounding amen. Through his anointed servant, he wants to draw us into his perfect plan for our lives which is beautifully crafted in third john 2. third john 2 quickly i want to read that he says beloved i wish above all things so consider this as a letter from god to you telling you that he wants you above all things to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers so this means that apart from the salvation of our souls, the next most important thing God wants for us is prosperity. And that's why we are in this conference. And I would like you to once again appreciate God's servant for being obedient to God by organizing this conference. We are here to be taught the ways of God. We are here to receive instruction concerning how we can assess our redemptive inheritance and blessings in Christ Jesus. And in line with that tonight, I have the privilege to introduce to you four powerful books authored, written by our Father. Put your hands together for him again. And these are books that will empower the church to break out of the curse of poverty into supernatural abundance and prosperity. Now, the first among these books is titled, I Refuse to Be Poor. I Refuse to Be Poor. Now, the reason why you must refuse to be poor, now in this book, when you read, you understand why you must refuse to be poor. Because poverty is a curse. Poverty is a stinking curse. According to Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 44. I can't read because of time. And because it is a curse, it leads to loss of dignity and respect. Loss of dignity and respect. It's in this book. It leads to rejection. Proverbs 14, 20. If you are poor, Bible says that even your own neighbors, they will reject you. So the gentleman in the house, if you ever proposed to a lady and they rejected you, this is one of the reasons. 
It's not a joke. It's one of the reasons. If you knew what to do to prosper, and you did it, and you prospered, and you proposed, you would have been accepted. But because of the curse of poverty, you are being rejected. After this conference, that will no more be your story in Jesus' name. Poverty destroys your confidence. It makes you a slave to the rich. So what must we do? We need to engage supernatural laws. Many people are battling and struggling to come out of the quagmire of poverty. Not because they are not doing anything. They are doing something. But they are engaging natural laws which have limitations. But in this book, our father introduces us to five major supernatural laws that will cause anyone to break out of poverty. He talks about kingdom promotion, how to advance the gospel with our financial resources, giving to the poor, talking about prophet's offering, and the law of tithing. And because tithing is so important and it is foundational and cardinal to your prosperity, he has taken time to write a whole book on that one alone. Because that one is the compulsory question you must answer in life if you want to prosper. You can clap for Jesus. Yes. The law of tithing. The cardinal thing you must fulfill in order to break through financially. And some people, unfortunately, have been deceived into thinking that tithing is a thing of the past. It belongs to the old covenant. It is not true. This book will open your eyes and explain to you to understand that tithing is still active under the new covenant. And then, just recently, when daddy was celebrating his 50th anniversary, 50 years of gratitude, he published this book, Four Types of Giving That Breaks the Curse of Poverty. Now, this also continues to shed more light on covenant keys that will lead you to prosperity and lasting abundance. So, thankfully, these books are displayed on my right hand. And let me say this. We are not talking about this book because you go and buy and our father get money. He's far beyond that, if you don't know. And let me tell you, recently he printed over a thousand books to be distributed to pastors free of charge. Yes. So if he needed money, he wouldn't, I mean, do this. There are several ways he can get money. So it is only to help us. And he told us a story how a certain man of God who could not afford to pay his school fees, even to buy a preaching tape, got connected to an anointed man of God and started listening to his messages about prosperity. He began working in them precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. And today, that man of God has prospered so much to the extent that he has given out 27 aircrafts as a gift to people. Maybe you are sitting here and you are the next person to buy an aircraft for the advancement of the gospel in this ministry. The keys are here. Make sure that in this conference, you get all these books, bury your head in it, and you see your life rising to the highest level. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Daddy, for the privilege. Get the book. <laughs> in fact, get the books. Four books. Hallelujah. Point of correction. The amount of aircraft that the man of God has given out is 3-3. 33, not 27. Thank you. God bless you, sir. It is well. It's amazing, isn't it? Hallelujah. Let's appreciate Jesus once again, who is the owner and builder of this church. Let's also appreciate the great servant of God that God has brought our way to teach us with knowledge and understanding. Father, we, Bishop, we appreciate you so much. All protocols observed. Please, let's make here for the following Faith Cathedral announcements. One, we give glory to God for the smooth takeoff of this year's season of Abundance Conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please note that the conference continues tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Come and receive from God's servant covenant keys to walking in supernatural abundance. Also remember that we are fasting from morning to evening 
throughout this conference. Secondly, there will be a special anointing for abundance service on Sunday, 5th September, to climax the conference. Hallelujah. You can do it better for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thirdly, we wish to remind all members that in pursuit of our church growth agenda for this year, we are embarking on operation, establish your new souls, and bring back backsliding members. We are to ensure that our converts are established in the church by praying for them, putting them in foundation school, calling and visiting them frequently, and ensuring that they are in every church service. If you know any old member who has stopped coming to church, please put them on your prayer card and begin to work towards their restoration. Hallelujah. Four, there will be soul winning and tele-evangelism on Saturday, starting from 9 a.m. Five, home cell meeting comes off this and every Saturday at our various cell centers from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. For direction to the nearest cell center in your locality, please call any of the following pastors. Pastor Alex on 0243-303-756, 0243-303-756, and or Pastor Savia on 0243-069-516, 0243-069-516. Praise the Lord. Furthermore, God's servant has launched a new project which is aimed at Multiplying our cell fellowship centers. Multiplying our cell fellowship centers. I, saw, I thought you would appreciate and be happy about this project. This project is titled, Ark on the Move. Praise the Lord. We encourage members to host the Ark of God's presence in their homes by opening them up for cell fellowship meetings. Please call or text the numbers provided above if you are willing to offer your home as a cell center. Finally, good news. Good news. Good news. Good news to all single ladies. On Sunday, 12 September, God's servant will have a special time with all single ladies in this church. Do we have single ladies in the house? Can I see you by hand? Yes, God's servant is about to have a special encounter with you. Trust me, your lives and your destinies, decisions, choices you're about to make will never be the same again. It's a purple night with single ladies. Purple night with single ladies. Wow. And the time is 6 p.m. Jesus is indeed Lord. Thank you. Of abundance, of abundance, new doors have been opened. The land, it is green, a new grace has been released. The glory, the glory of the latter is greater than the former, the blessing is here. It's all the heat. Lift up your hands. The glory of the latter is greater than the former. The blessing to see is all the All the There's an overflow. Abundance of favor. It's a new level. It's a new level. There's an overflow. Abundance of blessings I'm taking over I'm taking over Somebody wave your hands Offer your family Offer your education Offer your finances Come on I see the 
I'm the sun. 
Wow, is that all that you can do? <laughs> you can only find this in Holy Hill Chapel. Hallelujah, with excitement, let's appreciate Jesus, the owner and the builder of this glorious church. Hallelujah. And let's appreciate God can not do what we are seeing here alone. He will only do it through people. And we are so excited to have our Father, whom God is using so mightily, to do all the glorious things that we are seeing. Is that all that you can do to appreciate God's servant? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We welcome all of you to the 2021 season of abundance, day one. Hallelujah. And we shall surely leave this auditorium full of abundance, of blessings. Amen. Tonight, we are privileged to have very glorious testimonies. And before I invite the live testimonies, I'm reading one testimony, one documented testimony, and the rest we are going to receive live testimonies. Hallelujah. And every testimony that you're going to hear on this altar, if only you can believe, you are next in line for a miracle. Praise God. Our first testifier, documented testifier, Brother Michael testifies of being delivered from the spirit of alcoholism after 20 years. Wow. In August 2020, my fiance told me, Daddy, he told Daddy about me, and he asked, and Daddy asked to see me. On Sunday, 30th, August 2020, I came to this church for the first time. And after the service, we met with Daddy. By this time, I did not believe in God using pastors to work miracles. And so, when I greeted Daddy, he said that once I had ignored my disbelief and had come to see him, God will bless me. From then, I purposed in my heart to be under daddy's umbrella. That week, I joined the season of abundance and participated in the fast from morning till afternoon. While sleeping at dawn on the last day of the season of abundance, I began to feel a movement in my ear. Thinking it was dead, I used a cotton bud to remove it, but I still felt the movement. So I poured water in my ear and poured it out again. Still, I could feel the movement. After a little while, the Holy Spirit prompted me to pour the anointing oil in my ear. I obeyed. Then, immediately, I felt a struggle in my ear. The thing in my ear was now forcing to come out. I quickly picked a tissue turned my head and put the tissue on my ear. Within a few seconds, I felt the movement had ceased. I look in the tissue and people of God, a spider which was still alive laid in it. A few seconds after it came out, it died by itself. A live spider in the ears of this brother came out. People of God, before this, I had been drinking for 20 years. I testify to the glory of God that after the spider came out of my ear, the spirit of alcoholism left me. Wow. Any spirit you are fighting with in this season of abundance, it will leave you and never to return. He said, today, I am able to walk past alcohol and not have any appetite for it. This is a testimony worth celebrating. 
The God of Holy Hill Chapel has delivered me from the spirit of alcoholism. I thank God so much for bringing me here and for the grace upon the man of God through whom God has delivered me from this bondage after 20 good years. Jesus is Lord indeed. Thank you, Jesus, for the great teachings we receive in this house. Hallelujah. Probably you also hear, believing God for an encounter, get ready. Your season is now. Without much I do, we have three solid life testimonies. And I'm going to begin with Sister Aku. Can you please come forward and tell us your name? And she's testifying about sealed yielding harvest. Tell us your name and what the Lord has done for you. Uncommon favor, people of God. Please help me appreciate the God of Holy Hill for this testimony. Daddy and Mommy, thank you for this great opportunity. So, um, during the season of abundance, that is uh, in August 2020, a friend invited me for service, which I honored. I came on Wednesday, the 26th of August. And then before then, when I was coming, I, I was so heavy in the spirit. I felt so sudden in the spirit. So, I challenged God on my way to this place. I prayed and I told him that if he really wanted me to be in the gathering, he should show me proof. And people of God, the moment I stepped in the auditorium, everything just disappeared. I felt happy again. Wow. And so I decided to come the following day. And then by grace, after service, I met our sweet mommy. And then... And then she admonished me not to be familiar with the anointing, not to get familiar with the anointing. And she told me to write my expectations, add a seat to it, and lay it on the altar, which I obeyed. The Friday when I was coming, I brought it and laid it on the altar. And I, at this time, I was owing someone 700 cities, and I didn't know how to pay back because I had lost my job. Um, due to the coronavirus pandemic. And that evening when I got home, there was this friend I normally joke with a lot. He called and then he asked me how I was doing. And then we started talking, cracking jokes and all that. So later he said in our conversation, he, he then asked me what I needed. So jokingly, I said thousand, thousand cities. So when, the, when our conversation ended, People of God, he sent the thousand Ghana cities. Wow. Wow. Somebody is going to send you money by the close of this service. Hallelujah. So I told him that I, I didn't know he was serious about it. I would have told him 5,000. <laughs> Fast forward, I came on Sunday, rededicated my life to God, and then I joined the foundation school. God being so good, I completed, and then I have a department I'm serving. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Wow, well, let's put our hands together for the Lord for settling debt through an encounter in the season of abundance. Hallelujah. Shall we please, with a club, invite Lady Pastor Mama Faith appear, even as she shares her testimony. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the woman of God. God bless you, ma. Uncommon favor. Church, please help me appreciate and honor my most highly esteemed Reverend Dr. Kojobwa Tenbenpa. Say, I want to use this opportunity to appreciate you for the many years of investment, standing with my family in thick and thin in the fulfillment of God's purposes and plans for our life and ministry. Really grateful. Thank you. And I also want to appreciate the most adorable First Lady, <laughs> Lady Reverend Patience Ketura Bempa. Ma, you are really special. Thank you very much for your love and support. I want to, this night, I, I want to share my testimony or my encounter at last year's season of abundance. Praise the Lord. 
uh, this was the case when I came. Uh, uh, when I came for the season of abundance, it was phenomenal, superlative. I came with some financial challenges because that's our last year, I think from January, I had been um, a travel and tour agency. I was managing a travel and tour agency that had just begun. And it was doing well. I, had, I was handling conferences and I had a lot of ministers who were preparing to go to the U.S. for the conferences, which was going to give me a lot of money. Then the COVID hit. No more conferences. And I had, I had targets. I, I was supposed that I had planned before the end of the year. I had some targets. I was supposed to pay about 20,000 Ghana cities for my two more semesters left with my weekend MBA at the University of Ghana. And also, I had to pay for my children's hostel accommodation, my two boys who are at the university. And also, I had put down on my list, prayer list, that I was, I need, I was going to buy a land and start a building project. Why? Because I knew I could handle it because of the way the COVID came. But one thing that strengthened me was that as a child of God, your job or your work is not your source. God is your source. And he's the one that creates the channels for your blessing. And in meeting like this, the grace of prosperity is activated for your benefit. And once you're obedient to the covenant principles that are delivered at the meeting, you are in for it. So then came, it was a challenging moment for me. Then came the season of abundance. When I came and Bishop spoke about seed, then I didn't have the seed. So I went to borrow money. I borrowed and I came to give the seed. When I gave the seed, oh my God, the heavens opened. Just two weeks after the meeting, I visited a person who already knew I was doing my weekend MBA at the university? He already knew. So when I, I went, he said, ah, you said some time ago that you are, you are doing weekend MBA at the university. I said, yes. He says, have you paid your school fees for this semester? I said, oh, I'm yet to pay. He says, please don't pay it. I want to take, I want to pay for two semesters for you to complete. So I'm giving you a scholarship. Wow. Not only did he give me the scholarship, he also gave me a scholarship for the fees of my two boys at the university. My God. So now it was left with the hostel accommodations wow. and also my own plan to buy a land and start building. Then I went for a party, a very high profile party. <laughs> I remember when I was going for the party, Bishop even prophesied. He said, this party, you're coming back with something big. When I went for the party, after the party, I needed, it's a huge man of God. So I was, gave him, I just wanted him to see my kids. So I gave him my, the pictures of my kids. When he looked at it, he looked at it, he looked at me. He says, is that why you are burdened? Why are you burdened? I was laughing. So I was, and I didn't understand why he was saying I was burdened. He said, what do you want? What are, when the lady was also say, he also told somebody, what do you want? I say the same testimony. He says, what do you want? I, did, I was hesitant. I didn't want to say anything. He said, tell me. Why are you bedding concerning this kid? I said, okay, I had plans for the year. I, I wanted to change location from where I live. And I also have some expenditure for my children. He said, is that all? I didn't even give him details. He said, is that all? I thought he was coming to say labaya. He was going to pray. <laughs> and declare some blessings on my head. He says, wait, I'm coming. And the way he came back, he gave me an envelope. This one is not a promise, oh. Life, an envelope, and it was $20,000. Wow! Is that all you can cash, do? Cash, cash. Wow, far, wow, far, wow, banco. He didn't use, he put cash. <laughs> I said, oh my word, I put my hands <laughs> on my head. I want you to know that in this season of abundance, my God. the grace is even much greater. Amen. How much are you willing to take mm. in this season? Whatever the man of God will tell you, the advice Mary gave to the people who were looking for a miracle. He said, whatever he tells you, do it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody's dollar anointing is here this evening. Hallelujah. Whatever that the man of God will come and say, do it. And there shall be a performance.
all the way from South Africa. We have a testimony, and our own pastor, John Richard, is here to testify. He came all the way from South Africa to come and share his testimony. With a clap, let's invite our pastor, even as he comes to share this glorious testimony. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen and amen. God is good. And all the time. Well, help me appreciate my father, the very bishop, and our wonderful mother, the most wonderful mother in the whole world. <laughs> Hallelujah, ma. God bless you, Papa. God bless you so much. Well, I'm happy to be here tonight. It is always such a blessing to come home, to sit under the teachings of my father and drink from this wonderful system. Well, you know, it's a lot. <laughs> but uh, I, will try, I will try to summarize the whole thing. And then when the Lord gives us another opportunity, we will, we will, we will share more. Anyway. I come from a country that is almost impossible um, to, to prosper in everything that one does, especially when you are not from that country. And when the Lord sent me to go pioneer a church um, in, in South Africa, I had met a few other, other friends, um, some were from our country, others also from other countries. And at one time, I looked for them and I could not even find one. It was either one thing had happened or the other, and there were, and there were no more church, and there were no more friends. I looked for some, they had disappeared from the country. But you see, it is very important who you follow. Like, you always, like we always say, who you follow determines what follows you. And I thank God very much for the life of my father, his counsel, and his prayers. And today our church is really blessed. Hallelujah. And I always, you know, look at myself and, my, and the relationship that I have with my father. To always bring me back to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. And there is a man that we know, his name is Saul. And Saul was a donkey chaser. We know that donkey chasing is an earth-based reality because donkeys aren't worth anything anyway. And he had an encounter with the man of God. And that prophet of God's name was Samuel. You must understand where that man was coming from. He was a donkey chaser. He came from a family called Benjamin. It was the least in Israel. And his family was the least in Benjamin. So he came from the least of the least of the least. But when he had an encounter with the man of God, Samuel, he installed something in his destiny that completely revolutionized his life. And in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible tells us that he poured oil on him and he said, has the Lord not anointed you as captain over his inheritance? He said, as you leave this place, you will meet some men that are going up to Bethel, and they will give to you. He said, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will begin to prophesy, and you shall be turned into another man. This sums up my life in that country. Now, after a job, so I call him a job. After my father came to minister in South Africa, something opened up. We were in an area where we were paying so much money. And one time, armed robbers stormed our church. We were having a season of fasting and prayer. Five individuals in Balaclavis stormed the church and held the entire church hostage. Everyone in the church were, you know, on their faces on the floor. And I had just left, I had, I had just left the pulpit to go to the office. And our head of security just rushed into the office and locked the door and said, Pastor, I want you to be advised that armed robbers are in the church, five individuals holding guns in balaclavas, and 
they are, they are stealing from the people, basically. And so I had invited another pastor whose wife was pregnant. She almost had a miscarriage. And five minutes, they left the church. They left the church with people's wedding bands. They left with, you know, people's bags, people's monies. I mean, and they stole two cars. And when I stepped out, I lined the entire church up. Because I remember who my father is. And I asked each and every one what was taken from their hands. And when they told me, I lifted up an oil. And I called the God of Kojobempa. And I said, Father, as Ziglag, when they came and took everything from David, he asked you, should I pursue? And you said, pursue, you will overtake, and you will in no doubt recover all. And I wiped the oil on the floor. The two cars they stole, one, one just went hit something, left the car, and left everything in there and ran away. The second individual drove the car to the police station and left the car there and ran away. Today, our church is known for the power of the Lord. Now listen, we went and recovered everything at the police station they were telling us. They said, this guy just came, parked the car, and it was as if something was pursuing him, and he ran. Then I came back to the church the following day, and I said to them, these people are coming here. I was in an area called Four Ways in Johannesburg, and they gave me a call. They said, Pastor, there is a guy here. It's as if he has been set on fire. And he says he is not leaving until he speaks to the pastor. And so I got there. And when I got there, the guy was waiting for me at the office. And he said, Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm one of the guys that came um, to rob, you know, you know, this church. And I've come to apologize. Well, I led him to give his life to the Lord. But the good news is we recovered every single thing. Recently, we moved to a new facility, and we needed several thousands of dollars for that facility. And in that area, it's an, it's an office park. They never give any space, especially to churches, but only to corporate entities. And when we got there, they gave it to us. All the thousands of dollars that were needed were provided. Hear me. There are pastors in that area who have been there others for 20 years. And when they come to me, they ask me, how did you get this place? Because we've been coming here for years. And they told, thank you, mama. <laughs> and they told us that they will not give us this place. But they gave it to us. My case is different. Our case is different. When we got there, not very long, COVID hit. And we found now an ultra-modern facility. They needed about a million dollars for that facility. We lifted the matter before the Lord. I sent the pictures to Ejai and I said, Papa, please declare. And Papa declared. Someone came, he said, man of God, I'll give 200,000 US dollars. Another one came, he said, man of God, I'll give 150,000 US dollars. And now by the grace of God, we are in the process of purchasing that ultra-modern wow. facility to use for the church. Wow. Now let me tell you something. When the Lord begins to prosper you in a foreign land, the local people will talk about you. Yeah. So apparently the pastors have been meeting and they've been looking at this young man who has been so blessed in that land because they were there before we moved in there. And all that they say is probably he's dealing in drugs. Probably the ministry is not the only thing he does because we have been doing the same thing and have not been commanding the results he is commanding. My case is different. And always my scripture has been like this. John chapter 3. Jesus is, uh, Nicodemus' encounter with Jesus. He said, the wind blows where it wants. And nobody knows where it is coming from and where it is going. And so is the life of anyone who is born again. Daddy, thank you very much. And God bless all this of you. This is a powerful I give testimony. glory to the Lord. Amen. Give glory to God. And your season is today. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Tell your neighbor, tonight is my season of abundance. Tonight is my season of abundance. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful. Amen. Tonight is my season of abundance. The portal is open. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rabradosha handele bosahata. La bosha handele bosaha. There's an uproaring. There's an uproaring. Of abundance. Of abundance. New doors have been opened. New doors. New doors have been opened. Have been opened. The land it is green. The land. Has been released. New grace, New grace has, been, has released. been released. Now the glory of the ladder. The it is greater. The, the blessing is here. Is here. It's all it's all here. The glory of the ladder. The it is greater. Yeah. The blessing is here. That's an uproaring of sweet abundance. Of abundance. And new doors have been opened. New doors, new doors have, been opened. have been opened. The land is still green. The land, the land is still green. green. And new grace has been released tonight. New grace, new grace has been released. Now the glory of the ladder.
Walking in abundance. Walking in abundance. With the speed. Moving with the speed, the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am faithful. Lift your hands and begin to thank the Lord. Thank you. Kedala basutele makata la bahara sutia. La badi kalo se braga da bali sotala mandele mekata. Rabadi katole mekalo sabrahata yamala. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh Jesus, thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, thank you tonight. Bless you for this season. Thank you for amazing things you are about to do. Thank you for the wiring and the shiftings and the movements. No one's life will ever be reshaped. Heal those that are sick. Heal our physical bodies. Heal our finances. Heal everything that has to do with us. Wherever there is luck, let there be an overflow. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and take your seat. We want to thank God for tonight. And everybody is welcome to this year 2021 season of abundance. I want you to believe God that by the time this conference is over, you will not be at the same place again. Now, we are going to be starting because we have a lot of matters to deal with. We are going to be starting with a scripture, Psalm 65, verse 11. Psalm 65, verse 11. It says, you crown the year with thy goodness and thy pap drop fatness. So on the path, when we are walking with God, on the way, you are going to meet fatness. Why are many people poor? Because they don't know. Many people think they know, but they don't know. Because when you begin to know, it will start changing you. Now, from the New King James, this scripture reads this way. It says, you will crown the year with your goodness and your path drip with abundance we are august september the year is getting close to bedtime midnight and i want you to know that from now till december you will begin to experience abundance in your life your amen didn't show you believe what god is telling you now abundance you see the devil doesn't like this type of meetings where we talk about some of these things abundance means affluence bountifulness plenitude and luxuriance now the devil wants to turn the church into what pharaoh told them when they were living he said you can go and serve god and worship but leave your cattle behind Leave your money behind. And Moses said to him, no. We don't serve a poor God. He always gives us something to use as a point of contact to resurrect the spirit of abundance. Now, the Lord told me something. And that is why I even told the choir to wear what they are wearing. Because we are always flowing with the Holy Ghost. And me, myself, I, I went to look for something people to wear. Now, there is a reason for that. He said, tell them that we are a people of purple. And I will explain it to you. Because see, whatever you don't know, you can't walk into it. Now, the color purple represents something in, the, in Moses' tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle of Moses had three colors. Blue, red, and purple. Now, the wonderful thing is that when you mix blue and red, you get purple. Now, what was the reason for those colors that God gave in the tabernacle? You can see those colors here. You see, you see the blue, you see the purple, you see the red. Blue is the color of heaven. Heaven's color is blue. That's why when you look into the clouds, it is a blue color you see. Red is the color of man. We are red blooded human beings that's why when you cut any one of us what will come out is not green blood 
red blood. Now what God was saying, when Jesus came on earth, he was son of God and son of man. Blue and red. Now when he died, the two were mixed together. And it became perfection. That is the color purple. Now, so the check that came out of the resurrection is the church that experienced a mixture of son of God and man of God. Son of man and son of God. So when he came out of the resurrection, the two mixed together and we became God's perfection. And the color purple is associated with royalty. Nobility. Now I want you to write all these things down because you see, you need to understand some things. Prosperity doesn't come through prayers. It comes through teachings. So the color purple is often associated with royalty nobility, luxury, and power. Now, the New Testament church is a church clothed with purple color. So don't be surprised about the testimonies you are hearing. Those who don't know it will continue to live in poverty not after Jesus has come to die. So we are in the purple season of the church. Lift your hand and say, I am in my purple season. <laughs> say it and believe it because nobody can say it for you. <laughs> now some of you believe that you are coming from certain backgrounds that it is so difficult for you to prosper. It's not true. Listen, don't believe the devil more than God. In every nation there are poor people and there are rich people. But after this conference you are shifting position wherever the enemy has placed you you are going to put on purple color in the name of jesus so this morning whilst i was praying i just saw myself in a vision now what did i see i saw a group of people i've met and i i've come to park a car that that car i've not seen that type of car anywhere like i will describe it to you so when i parked the car i entered into the building and there were people were there and immediately somebody was teaching and he gave me the microphone and he said go and teach on transfer of grace i said ah what kind of transfer of grace so i stood there and i didn't then i began to look for scriptures then he said he said make sure everything you say is according to the word now the first scripture that came into my mind was ezekiel 2 2. now in the vision so i'm describing to what happened in the vision Ezekiel 2 to what is written there? The spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and I heard him that spake unto me. So I was, I was saying that, ah, what type of grace is about to be transferred? And the spirit said to me, this vision is about the, about the conference that is going to happen this four days starting today. He said, when you go and you start speaking, the grace for prosperity will begin to flow into people's lives and people will be impacted with the grace of prosperity. So get ready. There is going to be transfer of grace. Some of you suddenly find out that you have bought a house. Some of you suddenly find out that you just bought a car. Some of you suddenly find yourself in some kind of strange way. And so... Because you came for the first night, I decree, may the transfer of the grace for prosperity come over your life now. That was all that I was hearing. Transfer of, it's a grace is transferable. Grace is transferable. Grace is transferable. Now before we start a meeting, everybody find some currency. I want you to find the lowest amount. Because I want you to put it down, put your, 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 your leg on it. So that you don't think I'm doing fundraising. So find the lowest amount of money.
I just, I, I, I need a currency. The Lord told me. I said, what does it mean? He said, I'm bringing the people to a place of financial dominion. Put that money under your feet. If coins or whatever. You don't have money, put your mobile phone there. Go to the Momo session. Turn it, put your, put your leg on it. So tonight, do everything we tell you to do. This one is not a ritual. It's the cheapest thing you can do. If the doctor says, lift your leg, you lift it. Now, you are in church. Some, some things will put something there and put your, your leg on it. Very powerful. Father, anybody obeying this commandment, from tonight, you are walking in financial dominion. Now, the first thing we are dealing with tonight, as the Holy Ghost said to me, he said, tonight we are speaking on unveiling and destroying the curse of poverty like a want. Unveiling and destroying the curse of poverty like a want. Now, for most people, anytime they think about being blessed, they are thinking about what will somebody bring to me? They never think about what can I do? Don't always think about what will somebody do? But always, what can I do? Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 and 4. It says, through wisdom is an house building, and by understanding it is established. Next verse. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. So, riches and abundance come by knowledge. True wisdom, the house is built, but you can't live in an empty house. And your life is a house. The Bible describes us as trees of righteousness. So, you are a house. The Holy Ghost lives in the inside of you. But it shouldn't be an empty house. And this time I'm not talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. We are talking about material physical riches. So through knowledge, you fill your house with riches. You know, sometimes there are some funny people who come to church. Because you see, sometimes by the time they come to church, through their own means, they've gotten something small. But what they don't know is that if you don't have revelation knowledge, about how to multiply what you have and let it continue in your life. Today you will have it, but tomorrow you'll be broke. That's what many people don't think about. And so sometimes when they get to one breakthrough, they just move about. They don't care about church. When the pastor is teaching, he says, well, talk to poor people. You see, what you don't even also know that abundance grows, finances grow. You can't even live at the same level at the same time. There is a level where you are now. You are not married. When you finish church, buy some conke and kita school boy by the roadside you balance it and you think you are rich <laughs> but very soon you are going to get a wife very soon you are going to have children and you have to even ask yourself what kind of school do i want my children to attend you better listen to the things that are going to be taught these four days because some people their finances don't grow they are always at the same level because they don't know what to do now Every money you receive represents two things. I'm not even starting with my number, but let me, let me tell you. The money you receive represents food and seed. The food part doesn't increase. It is the seed part that increases. But many people, as soon as they get something, the next thing is to spend it. Spending is the food part. Giving is the seed part. So there are more food eaters in the church than sea sowers. But this way you will be converted from a food eater to a sea sower so you can walk in abundance. Let me hear amen here. So to overcome poverty, work, work on my son for me please. To overcome poverty and cross into abundance, all you need is knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 1. It said the false balance is abomination. I said I was listening to something from Pastor Kumui, Deeper Life. All of you know Deeper Life, their main, what they preach is holiness, holiness, holiness. Now Pastor Kumui said, a time came that he needed to preach on faith and other subjects. He saw that his church, his church people 
when he start, you want to talk about us, they switch off. And he said, there was one lady who said, oh, as for me, if you are not preaching about holiness, then I'm not. And then the lady one day fell sick. And the Holy Ghost message couldn't heal her. They needed a faith message. So he called the lady and he, he said, I am your pastor. I am trying to learn the message of faith because it is not only holiness that is important. The Bible said, without holiness, no man shall see God. But without faith, you can please God. So you need both. So he asked the woman, if I tell you to stand on one feet, how many hours can you stand? Within the shortest possible time, you start dangling here and there. But when you stand on a balanced two feet, there are so many Christians whose lives are not balanced. Somebody believe in prayer. Pray, 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 pray. False balance. But you see, God wants to give you a balance in life. You'll be spiritually loaded and financially dangerous. You become somebody impossible for the devil to handle. That's why sometimes certain type of people even feel they shouldn't follow some pastors to church because the pastors are begging. And most rich people outside the church are very rude. So as soon as you approach them with a begging attitude, they will not even listen to the gospel. But when you are loaded, when you are blessed, they know you are not coming from a kingdom of beggars, but you are coming from a kingdom of lenders. I pray for you in the name of the Lord. After this conference, you will beg no more, but you will be a distributor of God's resources. So let's start our studies today. Now, listen carefully. What is poverty? Poverty is a condition of having little or no money goose at all. Little or no money at all. In other words, you lack the basic necessities of life. And whenever, whichever way you look at poverty, it is a curse. When you understand it that way, you will be charged to know more and to break free from it. The Bible speaks about three levels of poverty. Number one, the poor. John 12, 8. The poor. John 12, 8. For the poor you always have with you, but ye, me ye have not always. Say, shake your head and say, I'm not one of them. <laughs> then the second group, the poorer. Leviticus 27 8. There are people, they are not poor, they are poorer. But if he be poorer than thy estimation. So he was describing people. Some are too poor, others are poorer, and some have filled the third level. Poorest. Second Kings 24 14. Second Kings 24 14. And he cried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty man of valor, even 10,000 captains and all the craftsmen and the smith. None remained save the poorest sort of the people. So in Israel, there were three groups of people. Now if Israel represents the church, then you are going to find the same thing in the modern day church. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. Amen. Why must you listen so well this week? Because poverty is not a state or a condition of a man. It is a curse. Now when you understand it that way, you do everything to break out of it. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Now, when you read Deuteronomy 28, talking about the curse of the Lord, from verse 1 to, to 14, talks about the blessings of God. Now it may interest you to know, there are 68 chapters, 68 verses in that chapter. Only 14 describe blessings and the rest talks about curses. So it suggests to you why many people are suffering and only few are making it. But people don't care to know what scripture. And let me tell you something. Nobody can teach you how to come 
out of poverty except the one who said the silver is mine and the gold is mine and i see you coming out this way now so he says but it shall come to pass verse one if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe to do his commandment instead to which i commanded this day all these curses shall come upon thee now deuteronomy 28 15. now from 15 going he began to now describe you say pastor where is it written that poverty is a curse now look at what he's saying now from 15 he said from now these curses will follow you then he brought us to verse 17 look at what the verse 17 says verse 17 says curse shall that curse shall be thy basket and thy store what is that investment account and bank account so when it is zero there is a curse there go to verse 23 verse 23 how the bible describes poverty you don't know it that's why you have accepted to be one of them and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth under thee shall be iron which means that there is no open heavens that's why he said bring you all the ties the tithe will deal with the curse of closed heavens but because you don't know you allow somebody to confuse you since you started not paying tithe has it affected me has it changed God? Verse 29, look at another case. So all trying to explain to you that God did, did not create you to suffer lack and want. 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind grope in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Look at that way. It's part of the case. So when you are not prospering, the case has landed in your house. But today, it will leave you alone. It will leave your children alone. And it will leave everything alone. 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. The two people say, Sika na And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Look at us in Africa today. Somebody want to go and sleep with a man, want to sleep with a man. We are here minding our own business. They say, No, you can't mind your own business. The men in Ghana must also start sleeping with the men. This is the document. You don't sign, we remove our donation from the nation. And it will take a bold person, it will take a daring leader to say no. Because sometimes, when there is not even a challenge, they've already sold us already. Poverty leaves you no choice. When did we get oil? He says, since President Kufu time. And if my memory serves me right, 2008, are they like? Where is the oil in your pocket? Where is the oil in our street? You can't find it in the street of Ghana. You can't find it in the street of Nigeria. And it represents this verse. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation that thou knowest not eat up. So you see, when you are under the curse of poverty, you don't even enjoy what you work for. Verse 38, if I don't explain it well to you, you may, you may take something abnormal to be normal. And with that kind of attitude, you can never change. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field. Look at it. And thou shalt gather but little in, for the locusts shall consume it. Business bankruptcy. So wherever people go bankrupt, when you see all these things, it's a sign that there is poverty. So that's why don't pray. You need to be taught. Because if you don't know, for instance, you don't know that red light means stop. What will happen to you? You say, it's light, it's light, it's light. It is light, but it means something. When you read the throne of you, what do all these things represent? It represents the curse of poverty. But First John 3, 8, my God. The Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Oh, First John 3, 8. That he might destroy the works of the devil. 
including poverty. So I declare from today, no one will call you poor ever again. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So let's deal with the, the curse aspect. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. I refuse to be poor. My God. Hey, say, 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 say. Say. It's not about somebody laying hands on you. You got to understand. We are dealing with light and darkness. If you are not in the light, darkness will control you. Most of the time when I walk with some guys and then suddenly the lights go off, people bring out their front touch light. And then that little light dissipates the light. You don't have to wait for darkness. Collect this light today. So anytime poverty wants to show up in your family, you said this is not a place for you. You can't bring a curse to my house because Christ has what? Redeem us from the curse of the Lord. Now watch it. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hang on the tree. Verse 14. Woo. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Say poverty go, blessing come. And shout and say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. You say, man of God, you are telling me to say I'm blessed. But I don't have law refer. You are mistaken. It's not what is in your pocket, it's what is in your mind. It's not what is in your pocket, it's what is your mind. Today I want you to put it in your brain that Jesus paid the price for your poverty and the curse of poverty is broken over your life. Somebody shout, I can never be poor again. Poverty died on the cross 2,000 years ago. You see some people say, poverty is holiness. Which kind of Bible do you read? Have you been to heaven before? It's a place of stupendous wealth. But let me say this before I continue. Poverty and prosperity is a choice. You have to make it yourself. Make it. It's not God's choice. That's why I said, this book of the law shall not depart out of the land. So I'm preaching it and you have to make a choice. Many years ago, I made a choice. I refused to be a local preacher. My God. I told the Lord, I don't want to be a pastor. Visiting people and giving prophecies because my stomach is worrying me. But I want to help the people that come to my church. Because I help Bishop when the post says so. Said there are two types of pastors. Some their church members help them. Others they help their church members. I'm moving to the second section. From today, people will not help you, but you will begin to help people. Tell your friend it's a choice. Don't sit down and be wearing whatever, whatever. And people are making poor choices because they lack knowledge. If Christ has redeemed us from the curse, what are you doing with the curse of poverty? Turn to that devil and whisper to him, you have been exposed. You have been exposed. You have been exposed. Why should no one condone poverty? Even if they put it on you today, take it off. Do this as I take it off. Some of you, your family put it on you, but you got to take it off. Some of you, Ghana put it on you, but you got to take it off. Africa put it on you, but you got to take it off. Don't take anything Jesus didn't give you. Anytime you see politicians criticizing the church, it's on the basis of money. They will never criticize us on casting out devils. They never criticize us when we are fasting. They get jealous when they see somebody driving a car and he goes to church. Because see, the church has made their unbelievers, the thieves to believe. The church has allowed the, those who are illegal possessors to believe that riches belong to them. So Solomon watched and said, my God, I've seen servants working. Servants sitting on horses and the princesses are walking on foot. But many years ago, I collected my horse. I collected my horse. Somebody said, I collect my horse. 
Nobody ride my horse for me to walk on the floor. He said this, listen to me. You can never come out of poverty until you decide one day that from today. I will no more be poor. It's a decision. So he said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Thou shalt observe to do what is written therein. Then you, God already wishes to prosper us. But some Christians, even if you see the way they are talking, when, when riches are coming, they lock the door, they say, this place is out of bounds for you. You will make your way prosperous. Lift your hand and say, I choose prosperity. I don't see, I don't hear my chorus as well. And I want every devil in your family to hear that you are choosing prosperity. Why you must not condone poverty? It takes away your respect, number one. And in this life, everybody ought to be respected. Why? You are bought by a royal blood of Jesus. So if Jesus pays such a high price for you, nobody should bring you down. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 4 to 16. The Bible said there was a city. There were few men within the city and some people came against the city. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 40 to 16. But there was a wise man in the city. By his wisdom, he fought and delivered the city. But the verse city says something pathetic. You know, when I read the Bible, I, I see it as if somebody is talking to me. He said, he said, but nobody, verse 15, nobody regarded the poor man. And look at the way he refers to him. Now there was found in his a poor wise man, my God. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then Solomon came to a conclusion. You see, many of you, when you walk in life, you don't observe. You see, don't just walk in life. Anything you see happening to somebody should be a lesson to you. Don't just walk by in life. We don't do like that. Everything you see. Somebody married, they married collapsed. You heard the story. What did they do? It should be a lesson to you. Why are some people, they used to be rich and now they are poor? It should be a lesson to you. Why are some pastors selling their church burden? It should be a lesson to you. Everything should be a lesson. So when he observed this thing, he came to a conclusion. He said, then said that wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. That's why God told him, Solo, you have asked for wisdom, but listen, I know Ecclesiastes before you came to write it. I will add riches to your wisdom, otherwise you'll be a poor, wise man. That's why when you watch United Nations meetings, the day Donald Trump is talking, the room is full. The day any African leader is talking, it's empty. The same paper, both of them are presenting. The African leaders even speak more dangerous English. Yes. Phonetics. <laughs> like our own. But they are not here then to hear your English. They say, carry your wisdom, go. If you have wisdom, you have used it to build something for us to travel to come in. Once you cannot build, your wisdom is not practical wisdom. Yes. They leave the room empty. From today, wherever you have lost your respect, I decree by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, after this conference, you will be loaded with riches. You are going to gain your respect back. Number two, the Bible says poor man has no defense. You see, when you listen to all these things, it should let you come to a decision. A poor man is vulnerable, he has no defense. Ecclesiastes 7 12. Wisdom is a defense, money is a defense. So when you are not loaded, you are vulnerable to a certain extent. Number three, poverty will let life reject you. When they are having a meeting, they won't call you, no matter your wisdom. Poverty leads to rejection, and you are too precious to be rejected. Proverbs 14 20. A poor man is hated, even of his own neighbor. But the rich has many friends. Very soon they will look for you from everywhere. And the next point is what I don't like. This is the scripture that let me begin to study. That's why I have four books on prosperity. I read, I read everything Bishop Oedipo wrote. Then I went to Copran and I read everything. Oh my God, my God, my God. My God. 
Because prayer alone, we are prayed on. Why we used to pray? Prayer, gymnastics. Don't try. We were still broke. So there is something we ought to know that we don't know. True knowledge, the chamber shall be filled with riches. We pray like that, and when we finish, we don't pay tight. We feel a mountain. Our pocket feels very empty. So, this scripture changed my life. Proverbs 22, 7. The rich rules over the poor. The borrower is a servant to the lender. I said, I hate poverty to the poor. Wear your one shoe with dignity. Instead of borrowing in a boutique and for three months you have no pay. The rich rules over the poor. Now don't take scripture as a joke. This is God's word. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. There is no politician that loves you more than God. Your mother doesn't love you more than God. He is teaching you. Because until you get angry in the inside, you can explode on the outside. And the devil likes you to remain where you are. But when the aha uh -huh moment hits you, when you say aha, uh -huh, he knows another dangerous warrior is rising up. Very soon you will build a house and your family members will live in. The rich rules over the poor. Somebody say, I'm the rich. Use your mouth to say that. Say, I'm the rich. The rich rules over the poor. And the borrower is a servant to the lender. My God here. So when the person you have borrowed money, he can enter your house for 30 years. You say I'm sleeping, there's nonsense. Wear him up. Sleeping where? Insult you. Call your mother in the grave who doesn't know the person. Your level is changing. Yeah. Your level is changing. Yeah. The Bible says you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Now somebody wants to make you a slave. I prophesy on this altar. Poverty will never make you a slave. And to know by the anointing, I see you breaking the backbone of poverty. Breaking the backbone of poverty. Breaking the backbone of poverty. Now, the next reason why you shouldn't remain poor is that when you are poor, you can push the gospel, which is all of us our responsibility. Every believer ought to be able to give something for the advancement of the gospel. For me, that is even my biggest headache. Thank God I decided many years ago that I will never do anything in the church to take a letter and give it to an unbeliever that he should come to the church to help. But that's what many churches do. You go and give a letter to some drunkard. Go and give a letter to some people. They will just attend the church. And when they, as they are sitting there, there are some poor folk, they say they are serving God. Drop some charman be. Drop something be. And they leave. Now, what the pastor doesn't know. Presently, in the missions conference, I was telling our organization pastor. I said, what the pastor doesn't know is that the people that came from outside, that brought the seed. I've taken the harvest away. Because prosperity is a law. It's not luck. It's a law. And when you fulfill the demands of the law, it will work for anybody. So this church, we don't do that here. We give ourselves, we prosper ourselves. So the blessing they here. Say they here. Yeah. Very soon. Last week, a gentleman in the church just bought a GMC car, a GMC minibus, dropped it in church, and he left. Last time I was here, somebody brought his car key. This is my seat. Last week, somebody was there. He, somebody signed a check, 100 million. Listen, that's why when you come here, you don't. You, if you come to church here, you, you felt some pressure. It's a pressure you brought from outside. It's not, you didn't pick it from here. That when I went to the church, there was pressure to give. Please, 
you brought the pressure from somewhere. God is too much here. You don't put pressure on anybody. From today, pressure lives your life. Pressure lives your life. Romans 10, 15. How shall they preach? Except they be sent. Today, one of the TV stations that is carrying even what I'm preaching. He said, he said, man of God, I was trying to get to you and our, our, our channel just went digital. We have covered the whole of Africa. We are about to go to the world. And I just want your preaching tape to get. So he sent me the nation. Every African nation is, is covered tonight as I'm preaching. How will you be able to get them? Number two, why do they need a tape from this church? It is not every video you can show on TV. You need some light to give you the image. You see, people don't know all they say. You hear some pastors say, now when you go to the church, they are doing this. Please, you, you bet. Village man. Village man, shut up. shut up. Number two, you are also selfish. Because you are thinking about yourself. But those of us that are thinking beyond here, to reach it, now we have almost every Muslim nation has downloaded a preaching on our video podcast. How will you reach the world with your young phone picture? And yet the same people, they will be watching videos of other worldly musicians. The light is flashing. Ha! You know, I was in a meeting in Miami and Paula White was preaching. You know, Paula White, the, the husband is a musician. He, he, he follows. And then Paula White says something that almost broke every pastor's heart. He said that. He asked his husband, the last musical show they did in Holland, what was the, this screen, what did they call it? LED screen that they put up. They put an LED screen for show, not for God. Hundred million dollars. Wow. In one night show. Why are these people not afraid of money? Why are they not afraid of money? No wonder the devil is being promoted at an astronomical rate. You look at a picture somebody took in church. His face is like he's in 1942. Then you look at what these tingling satanic girls have put on Instagram. My God. From today, I destroy the mentality of poverty from your brain. Very soon, the church is taking over everywhere. Taking over the television stations, taking over the radio stations, buying houses, buying cinema halls, and many of you will become partakers of that blessing. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Why are many poor? Number one, wrong mentality. Their mentality is wrong. And the Bible says, a man thinketh in his heart. So it's in Proverbs 23, 7. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the mentality for abundance. So let's flash here and go. Many people think money is evil and poverty is a sign of purity. If poverty is a sign of purity, then God should be poor. But the only, the most holy God. You know heaven, the song that they sing is holy, 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 holy. That's the song. That's what no, we say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. That's heaven song. They don't say any other. They don't sing breakthrough. They don't say anything. It's a holy place. And the most stupendous place. How do you feel? If you live in a house of seven people with one toilet, does it make you fast? No. Does it make you comfortable? If you don't change your mind, what God has for you, you can never have it. Because many of us are fighting abundance in our mind. Fighting abundance in our mind. So, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. The love of money. He never told you to love money. 
He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. We don't love money, we use money. From today, you are going to use money. We love God, money is our servant. So I reject poverty. <laughs> Number two reason why many are poor, ignorance of God's covenant laws. Ignorance of God's covenant laws. Ecclesiastes 10, 15. The labor of the foolish, we read every one of them. Because he know we know how to go to the city. The labor of the foolish, we read every one of them. He doesn't know Ignorance is the greatest cause of poverty. People eating what they are supposed to be sowing. <laughs> if you eat all the maize as food, what will you plant? Some Christians, because of ignorance, as soon as they get money, pen and paper, expenses. You check the list. He didn't mark tithe. He didn't mark prophet's offering. He didn't mark seed. How will you prosper? You see, you are operating the worldly system. Now, let me surprise you that most of the people you call rich in the world, they, they, the amount they owe is more than what they own. Fake. 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 Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, give me understanding. Number three, why are many people poor? Laziness. Even coming to this conference, he's lazy. He doesn't want to come. He said, I watch on Facebook as I'm preaching. He has already slept. Three points he didn't hear. <laughs> he's holding the phone like this. Ah, don't. <laughs> Proverbs 10, 4. Every lazy man has made a choice for poverty. Don't be lazy. Let the 24 hours of your life count. He become a poor that dealer with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent shall be rich. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a sinner, laziness will make you grow. How do you get time to write the books? We write it in the midnight. We don't sleep in the night. During the day we are busy. My wife is very calm. Me, I sleep in the morning from five or four, four to about eight. That is when I sleep because the night, my eyes are like principality. I got to work. All the prayers we read, we sit down to write them. You can be a lazy man. He become a poor. Nobody gave you a work. Find a work by yourself. Create a work by yourself. Because a working hand is a channel through which God will pass resources. He want to get you something, but you have no channel. Some people, they will wait until there is a breakthrough and then they will ask them, do you have a bank account? And they say, because to them, you need to get money before. No. You create the purse before the money comes. Anyone here without a bank account, tomorrow don't come here if you don't go and open one before you come. Because miracle money is about to fall into a people bank account. Now, another surprising thing about lazy people. Today in modern Ghana, some people don't have Bomo account. You ask him, I want to send you money. I'll send it through my sister. You are lazy. You are lazy, lazy, zay, lazy. How many minutes does it take you to create a Momo account? My God. Just a Momo account. So lazy. Just a Momo account. And so when we declare miracle money, the angels are saying, leave that lazy girl alone. We can't find her account to drop the money in. Look at somebody and say, be delivered. My God. You can't open a Momo account. Yeah. 
And sometimes somebody wants to send you money. He picks some name will come. He says, Ah, is it not your name? So give it to that, my sister's uncle, brother, sister. Who, who wants them to waste like this? Ask somebody, do you have a Momo account? Ask him. Do you pay for it? Do you pay to open it? <laughs> oh! Somebody declared deliverance in the atmosphere. Look at it. Proverbs 34. The soul of the slugger, the soul of the lazy man desire, and has nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. You can't even open a Momo account. No wonder. No wonder. That person didn't come to church. He's, he's watching on Facebook. <laughs> number, number. Then that's the reason why people are broke is borrowing and indebtedness. Some people borrowing is part of their blood system. Listen to me. No borrower can ever be rich. Because what the borrower does is that he keeps digging a ditch deeper. Now he borrowed 100,000. He finished paying, he borrowed 200,000. He finished paying, he borrowed 300,000. So the hole gets deeper and deeper and deeper until one day he swallowed. Churches are involved in all those kind of things. Pastors are part of it. Borrowing. Borrowing. We've never borrowed a dime since this church started. Show, our, show us where our poverty is. Show us. The Bible works. The Bible works. The Bible works. Some of you, you brought the spirit of borrowing from Kualibu when they were bringing you. After they gave birth to you. But today I prophesy that thing will drop off your life. I didn't hear any from those at the top. I said the spirit of borrowing will drop from your life. Live one day at a time. God will prosper you. It has become the character of many people. Indebtedness. Some when they don't even need to borrow. They have their money. Mama, give me tomatoes. I'll pay you tomorrow. Oh! I have, I have 50, 50 cities. It's too big. Tomorrow I will change it when I'm passing by. Lift your hands. I cast you. Come out. Come out of my life. Borrow away. Come out. Many people. Second week into the month, their salary is finished. A manager is borrowing from the security man of his company. You have no health stories. Do you know why? It's a spirit. No matter what we do, you have to borrow. I. When the finish, they say even Ghana government is so, even America is so. What do I care? Then when the finish, or Kafu also credit the other. One day at your funeral, they will come and hustle you in your casket. Somebody shall deliver me, Lord. Now, the next one I want to talk about, very important. Generational transfer of poverty. Everybody watch out. Don't stand up. Now look at my face. I don't want you to lie to yourself. Because see, whilst I'm preaching, the anointing of the Spirit of God is here. And it's breaking certain things. Look at your background and see if you inherited poverty. It's not your fault. I'm not blaming you. But I want you to look at something so you'll be real with me that I'm not joking. You'll see that. Before you said, I. <laughs> you turn left. You turn right. And you look at the cloth they used to <laughs> bundle you from the hospital. Oh my God. It has been transferred without any pressing button. But look at me. You can come out. 
you are coming out. Amen. Very soon, when your children wake up, they will see transfer of poverty. They will see transfer of riches. Don't just say amen. Something broke in your life. That was the situation some of us found ourselves in. I tell you. If I tell you how, where I used to walk to go to school, you won't believe it. One day, I was driving with my son Adams, and I said, we saw Banchaka Kru. Do you know Banchaka Kru? <laughs> what is the English name? Cassava <laughs> Ball. What is it? Cassava <laughs> Ball. Where are the Soga Popo people? Sika, give me the name. That was my chief food. I still like it today. So I told, I told him, stop, stop the car. This time we are driving a very nice car. Stop the car. Let's buy this thing. So I started eating it because I didn't give him some. So when we were going, I asked him, will you eat? Yes, sir. Papa. So I asked him, Pastor, do you know how to eat? <laughs> he stopped the car. He said, he said, even this one is an adva advanced version. In our house, you see the maids, the one that they have dried, planning to go and sow it. He said, that is the one they will boil on the stick and give it to me to be eaten whilst I say, my God. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Let me say it in you. Once a boy and one, you were fresh one, I am one. Now, only the end, the area to a password. Yakwa could be a brunner and china. And no, I had it too soon near Noah. And they give it to you with salt to eat. Transfer. But today I came here with an anointing over my head. Wherever you are watching me from. Whatever poverty they transfer from your mother's house, from your father's house, and they give it to you by the blood of Jesus, it is destroyed. Let your amen be big, I said, it is destroyed. If you go to listen to SBS, the day Papa was giving a testimony, Charlie, the poverty was too much. But if today he is the head of an international gold mining company, then your case is not too strange. If today the person that was eating dry this thing is now leading a company, an international company, with some of the company contract, $90 million. And sometimes we eat some of this food to remind us where we are coming from. I declare, wherever you are standing, I don't need to lay hands on you now, listen to me. By the power of the Holy Ghost, by the time this week gets to an end, you will change level many, many, many times. Lift your hand and say, let the power be broken. My God here. Yeah. Now very soon, very soon, you have a car to pick your children alone. Very soon. You have a car for weekdays and weekend car. You have a... You better say amen. Very soon. You will not only be a landlord. You will be renting houses to people. Very soon it shall be said. You alone have built a house, a church in the village of God. Very soon it shall be said. We will not say he just went to Togo and came back. You will be crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Let your amen show. That's why I like to help people. But remember when they, they say school fees, then I will jump. I used to have a classmate called Juliet. God bless her. I used to read her books. I read her books. When I went to write exams without... Uh, revision because somebody stole my notebook and I don't have any textbook. I still got 
Yes. Now, one day, I, I, I used to be a day student, so I used to like the bodies. So I, I hid myself in the body, and then my headmaster arrested me. So they announced at the assembly my name, that I'm not a, a, a border bat. And do you know why I did that? Do you know why I did that? I just, I just wanted to feel how the bodies used to feel. I was not even sleeping there. We were studying in the night. I just go there to change myself. This thing fought me. So when I'm cursing poverty and you don't need it, you can carry your Bible go. And I want to tell you, there's nothing beautiful about poverty. There is nothing glorious about poverty. That's why I look at your face and I say, from today, poverty dies in your heart. Just being a Christian doesn't bring you out. You need specialized knowledge. Like as I'm speaking, I'm expecting some of you to be angry with yourself. I tell you. You know, I'm not putting down local schools or what we call Saito. But I was so Saitoized that I didn't know that people learn French in school. So on my first day in secondary school, when a man, a slim man came, they were twins, French teachers. And he said, La table. I said, What? Where from that one? La Cray. I said, what is happening here? What a strange language. And then my friend, Paul Nigapi, a rich man's son, Ruffian, he touched me and said, Bempa, which school did you attend? I said, I attended school. I've never heard one French word in my life. New Amakom L.A. Primary School. These guys came from Kings International. Well, later, and you know, whom Rusty later got took me to that school to be a teacher. They were speaking French. Lacre, Latab, Senepaku Kutaye La Jean. Ah, Saint Michael. Is it a problem that I can't speak French or? I never heard it in my life. That's how strong poverty limited me. But if I be a man of God, anointed with all breakthrough testimonies, I decree, today is the last day you will experience poverty in your life. So I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Where we grind Patch corn in cherry. We grind it in the nika nika. Then we put sugar inside. We call it carry me go. After two hours, we call for water. Water! They thought we were, we were charging something inside. We were charging something inside. But today, there is no restaurant in this world where we cannot not even take myself 10 people or 50 people sit there they will eat i will pay i tell you it's not church money so sometimes when i'm there i will just call pastor prince Ali. let us go they don't know what i'm trying to do i'm trying to disgrace the devil when they carry festos and this guy to kim i say eat i was sitting down watching them One of them went and took just one bottle of KK. I said, my, oh my God. Do you know how much, how much I'm going to pay? Listen to me. There are places they thought your feet will never step there. But by the anointing of prosperity coming upon you, very soon you will be there many times, many times, many times. Last Sunday, my brother Ben was sharing testimony. You know? It was a tearful testimony. But glory be to God. That's why the devil doesn't want you to come. By the words you are hearing, where they found you yesterday, they won't find you there anymore. Tell three people, I've come out already, my God. 
I am out already. 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 I am out. I am out. So, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible said, Prophet of God died. And the creditors came to take his sons to sell them to, to whatever. I pray for you. Everything you have ever desired, if it was a house you saw, you will build one. Take this word serious. If it was a car you saw and you like it, you will drive one. If it was a city you watch on television. If it was a city you watch on television. By my God, you open the door for you to travel to that city. Give the Lord a shout of praise in his place. How do I step into abundance? Five quickly more things. Number one, understand the following five things. Understand that riches and wealth belong to your father. And because you are his son, it belongs to you. Understand it. It's no prayer. Understand it. The riches you see in this life is not for politicians. It's not for any nation. It's for God. And if you are his son, then inheritance must flow to you. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. And the world and they that dwell in it. Psalm 50 verse 10 to 12. He said, every beast, of, every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle upon a thousand hill. I know all the fowls and all the mountains. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. So it's foolishness for every child of God to decide to be poor. The, 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 the world is mine. The world is mine. The word is mine. If you see my little daughter, is using an iPad. It's not for little children. Because it, I was the one using it. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a higher version than the normal one. But since I got a higher one, little girl, 16 years, she took it without any apology. And I can't collect it because they know inside even more than myself. Because it belongs to the father. Whether it is a size or not her size, she has taken it. Sometime before you see your perfume is gone. They don't find out the price. They just open your wardrobe. You ought to behave like that. Everything you see in this world belongs to your father. This year you will possess your possession. And to damage it more, he got to it. The silver is mine, the gold is mine. Who is talking? Say my father. Who is talking? Say my father. How can you have a rich father and be so poor? Get angry. John 1, 12. As many as believe it, to them gave you power to become sons of God. Not sons of Ghana. Not sons of Akumadai or Sogahope or sons of Labadi Beach. No! Sons of God. Who is God? The owner of the whole world. From today, every person that belongs to you, I deliver it to you. Yeah. Number two, it is God's desire that you prosper. What is the father doing with the things he has if it's not for his children? Tell John 2, I wish above all things that he may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. That's your father. It is his desire that you live in abundance. Number three, it is your father's delight. As fathers want to see their children doing well in school, so your heavenly father wants to see you doing well. It is your father's delight that you do well in life, that you are not a beggar. It is your father. The father gets happy. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad. That favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, the Lord be magnified. Which have pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Every witch that is hiding in your background. 
that is happy because you are poor i cause your habitation in the name of jesus number four you have to understand jesus became poor so you'll be rich that's the scripture that even caused me to get angry jesus don't let jesus die for nothing second corinthians i call it 289 second corinthians law 289 second corinthians 8 9 you know the grace of our lord jesus christ that even though he was rich for your sake oh he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich you are about to drive your latest car between now and december the next thing i want you to understand before we conclude the blessing of abraham is yours there is a blessing reserved for every child of abraham it is yours don't don't let it go waste and go to heaven and ask god what did you do for me galatians 3 14. that the blessing of abraham might come upon the gentiles today whoever has cursed you with poverty i exchange it to the blessing of abraham from today wherever you walk they will see this is one of the abraham children this is one of abraham's daughters this is one some of you, even your watch infuriate people. Some of you, when they see your weight, they are jealous. They should get ready for hypertension. Because in this conference, God will not give you one. He will give you one and give you two and give you three and give you four until you enter into the overflow. Somebody shall overflow. So ladies and gentlemen, poverty and scarcity it's not God's plan for you. Abundance is his plan. But what is the anchor law? The anchor law is the law of giving. Which many don't want to hear. But until you hear that thing many times, it will not enter your spirit. That word giving. You cannot catch it at the beginning. And until it becomes like something spiritual tonic, you can't flow. Because the devil knows when you become a giver, you prosper. So he, he makes many people, they give today, tomorrow they will hold their hands. But for you to become a consistent giver, that's when you break the back of poverty. But until you hear that word over and over and over, for faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Genesis 8, 20 to 22. Genesis 8. Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offering. And the Lord smelled a good savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground. So the curse of poverty was destroyed on the altar of giving. It was destroyed on what altar? When they prayed, altar of giving. And the Lord smelled, I will not again curse the ground anymore. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from you. Now that will I again smite the earth as I have done. Then he gave the anchor law. Oh, 22, 22. When I get here, I get excited. Everybody you can read, let's be ready, go. Whilst the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not pass away. Abundance answers to the covenant of giving. Abundance is kingdom stuff. It answers to knowledgeable giving, not just giving. You must give with knowledge. Whether you prosper or you become poor is a decision. But today, by the things you have heard, make a quality decision that will change your generation forever. You will take a decision and back it with action. Take a decision and back it with action if it is not money you need in advance if it is money you need in abundance then you must plant more money seeds to produce money harvest don't let anybody deceive you don't let anybody deceive you don't let anybody deceive you i just told you we got our gmc car because we gave a, a Sakoya Toyota to a pastor in the village. Somebody brought a bigger car. Two weeks ago. So even if we don't do any fundraising in the church, and the church leaders are engaged in secret giving, the church will prosper. People don't know that. 
They say, oh, it's the offering of Listen, you can collect all the offerings in the church and suffer like Ate. <laughs> Collecting offering doesn't prosper you. It's giving offerings that prosper people. So now, we are going to close here tonight. Second Corinthians 9, 6 to 10. New King James. Ooh. But this I say. He who sow sparingly will also reap sparingly. So what is the size of abundance you want? Let it determine what you give. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. And he who sowed bountifully will also reap bountifully. So you sit down. What kind of harvest do I want? That must inform your giving. It's not offering time. You just put your hands in your pocket. La 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 Blue, blue, green, green. Yeah, yellow, yellow. The joking is too much because and people think they are giving, you see. But they are giving without knowledge. Look at it, verse 7. Let each one give. Oh! As he purposed in his heart. And not gradually of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Which means that anytime you are forced to give, you lose your harvest. Anytime you are forced or pressurized to give, you lose your harvest. Many pastors will say that, but I will tell you that. Because I have studied this thing in the college of prosperity. And God is saying, to make all grace abound towards you. Through your giving. The grace for abundance is made available to givers, not collectors. That you always having all sufficiency in all things. How many things? So giving is the only law. One day God sat me down to teach me. He said, fasting can do certain things. It can do certain things. But giving can do almost all the things. Giving brings healing. Giving brings breakthrough. Your giving can let God love you. Solomon loved the Lord. He loved him back. That's why I said, always having all sufficiency in all things. John D. Rockefeller was going to die of cancer. He gave, the cancer died. It's a dangerous law. That's why the devil, eh, he will make you shout and kick your leg. Giving? No. Why? We don't trust God. Do you know why people don't give? They don't trust him that if I give, they are asking questions. Can he give me back? Will he be able to give me back? Let me tell you my testimony. One day I was standing here. Somebody, of course, if I preach without testimonies, I am not ready to preach this message. I was standing here, and a man of God was preaching. He said that he called for a seed of 2,000. That's where he started from. The spirit said, you give $5,000. I was sitting here. Ah, I said, did you hear the pastor? I, I'm talking to Holy Ghost. I said, did you hear the pastor on the stage? He said, 2,000. The spirit said, no, you. According as every man purposes in the heart. They say, hey, Madam Fupacho, if you say, okay. now, we all friends, I said, 10 cities. You are joking. You are joking. So, that was all the money I had. <laughs> hey, the devil will never tell you to give. <laughs> anybody that said he heard God say, I bind you, devil, stop binding him. He never tells anybody to give. Anytime you hear give, tell your friend, God is talking to you. Talking to you. Why is it so? The devil is not interested in your change of level, never. Okay. He always wants you to be at that same level. Uh, so, he, he will never talk to you. So, those of you when God is talking, say, some voice in me. Some spirit, it's not some spirit to them telling you. So I, I came and I gave. Now this is where the real prosperity is. The practicality of the message. Two days later, somebody came to look for me. Gave me an envelope as usual. So I dropped it. I was going. So later I will check it because when I check, the Ghana City, you can know this one is thousand, this one is. <laughs> So I said, oh, this one is thousand. Now. I will check. Do you know what the spirit said to me? He said, go back and check. When I check, it was $10,000. Wow. 
How many days? Three days. Which bank in this world? That's why you see, we the church, eh? when we become, it worries God because we have so much access, but we don't know. Who is teaching it? They only talk about it when they, they offer in time. No, it should become your lifestyle. That any time you need something, you know, hey, the next thing is don't pick a phone and call somebody. What you have to say, what kind of seed can I sow? That's the mentality I want to give you today. That any time you need something, it's not, can I call my uncle? Can, no! What kind of seed can bring me this type of breakthrough? If you get there, I bet you you'll never see poverty again. You know? God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Always having sufficiency in all things. And you, you have, look at it, may have abundance for every good work. That will be your story very soon. Yeah. Verse 9, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. Therefore, his righteousness endures forever. God will bless him. He always give. This is the place I want us to read. Then we close. Verse 10. Somebody say, now. Nah. Nah. Hey, hey. May he who supplies seed to the sower. Wait a minute. Supply seed to who? Supply seed to who? So if you are not a sower, will you get seed? No. This is people's problem. See, sometimes they will call for a seed in the chair. Don't think about what you have. Just be a sower. As soon as you pick the envelope, he supplies seed to the sower. How I wish you understand. So it's not what I have I'm giving. It's what he has. He's giving through you and multiplying back to you. There is nothing strange about giving. What you have, he gave it to you. Our biggest problem is we don't want to change the level. So he said, let me stay here. He said, no. Now, may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. Look at something. Amazing. And bread for food. Comma, comma, there's comma there. So he's going to say something. Supply and multiply the seed so. Did he say multiply the food eating? No, the no. seed. So God doesn't multiply bread eaters, he multiplies seed showers. That's why. Are you sleeping or you are alive? This is where the point is. So don't miss the last point. That's what I've reserved for the last. So when you become a bread eater, you will never prosper. Because in this scripture. There is no supply and multiplication to bread eaters. The supply and the multiplication is for seed sowers. So what do you decide tonight? I'm a seed sower. Many, many miss that word. I say, tell yourself, I'm a seed sower. Because the supply only comes to seed sowers. Lift your hands and speak in tongues. I don't want to say anything anymore. Take a decision today. I am a seesaw. The father, you catch it. He will supply and multiply seed, not bread. There are two types of people bread eaters and seesaws. I'm not a bread eater. I am a seesaw. It's not pray for me, pray for me. No. Who are you? I gave my first car, it was a white BMW. 2007. Because I heard someone testify. And I said, do people give cars? I'm on number 20 now. Some friends of mine are giving 50 in a day. So as I'm standing here, there's a lot of pressure on me. So in case you think some of us are relaxing, we are wearing new boots. My grandfather Copeland just gave 33rd aeroplane as a seed. The way you have relaxed, I don't know if you have a Bible. You are still struggling with high school offering. When God has changed you multiple times. 
But in the name of Jesus, tonight, receive the anointing to be a sin sower. I didn't hear amen here. Yeah. Your children will never come and find you the same way where you are. Receive that anointing. I went to preach for somebody. And uh, the pastor said to me that some leaders in the church are saying that because he's the one that invited me, he should take care of me. I said, oh, I didn't preach for the pastor. So I told the pastor, hey, don't worry. Don't take, I will pay my hotel. Don't bring me food. I will eat my own food. And then I saw it for him and I left. Why did I do that? You see, those people think that they are making me broke. They don't know that what they give me don't change me, what I give. I have the key already. Don't worry yourself. I can even give you now. And God will multiply you back to me. Lift your hand and say, from today, Lord, from today, Lord. give me the anointing to be a sea sower. And I will break the back of poverty. And I will break the back of poverty. Lift your voice and pray now. I see the spirit of abundance. Coming upon. I hope the money is still under your feet. The thing that you step on it. Yes. Poverty dies. The day you decide. I am a sea sower. It's not why somebody gave you money. You can spend it. They can give you one million. You spend it. Sea sowers flow in abundance because you will supply seed to the sower. Multiply the sea sower. So multiplication only comes to sea sowers. Every sea sower, lift your hand and say, Lord, I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Somebody is sick, but you are being healed right now. I receive grace. The Lord told me, he said, normally I don't do that. If you see me giving him, it's the last day of the conference. But he said, you are, you are not the one calling for the conference. I'm the one calling. This is what you go to do. He said, when you come first night, listen, I've told you, there's no pressure here. Give everybody this envelope and write on top of it, a seed for my knee. He said, give it to everybody. Let everybody take it home. They should go and think about what they need. Anytime they are ready between now and Friday, they should drop it on the altar. So even if you don't bring it, nobody will see. A seed for my need. Who has a need in the church? How many of you have, don't have your cars yet? Uh, how many of you are yet about to marry? How many of you are yet about to travel for the first time? I'm trying to give you a vision in case you, you ask you, oh, they are, oh, they are here. how many of you have dreamed that one day you got to build a house for your mother to live in? You see, you need to have a vision in life. You must have a need. And that is what drives you. That is what drives you. One day I took a plane, went to Nigeria. 10 a.m., the plane will return at 2 p.m. To sow my first thousand five hundred dollars seed. When I got there, I couldn't even get opportunity to see the man of God. I saw the man of God outside. I died. <laughs> Two p.m. The sun very hot. You see, you need to be radical. Some of you, when I'm preaching, you are so relaxed. Sister, don't relax. You. I. They say you can't see the man of God. I say no, when I'm here. Ooh. Nigeria protocol is not my type. Oh. <laughs> Takashi protocol. I told them I've converted them in Nigerian life. The man of God will come. We die, Richard. He said, peace. 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 I landed in Ghana. Somebody gave me gold for the first time in my life. Listen to him. There is something hanging on your life. But you need something to release it. You need. God told me to organize the conference and to help you. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you have a need? You don't have a need, you are dead. This evening, don't bring in nines like this. You, you write on it like letter writing. When you put a seed, then you start the letter writing. But I want to marry. I want my refreshment at the biscuit. 
Tell your friend, don't have mercy on God. He has everything you need. Nobody should show mercy here. How many of you need one of the envelopes? A seat for my need. If you don't need anything, please, just enjoy my message. Go home and sleep. But by the time you see me in five years' time, Last master pretender said, from this level, where are you going? He was asking me. Uh, we are changing level. Uh, yeah. You know where we used to be. I told somebody in another church, my salary at the end of the money. He said, oh, he couldn't believe it because to him it's too small. He thinks that because the church is big, I'm not looking at that angle. I'm looking at other angles. He was an associate pastor. He couldn't believe it. I said, you are the first person I'm telling you. He said, at your level. So I'm leveling myself somewhere else. Do you have a need? Some of you want international scholarship. Pray that you can pray. You even pray and play and pay. <laughs> <laughs> Give the Lord a shout of praise. Oh. Hear me? If I be a man of God, in seven days, when you drop this envelope from the altar, the altar will speak on your behalf. Yeah. I, God. I, have, I have Mr. Che here. He doesn't live here, but any time he comes. The other time he gave his land. Now, do you know what he's doing? An international company. He was in Ghana. They sent him a letter. Do you want to be a partner? Or you want to work for us to pay you? I said, no work for you partner now he's the only black partner in that international company what are you talking about how much is that one now some of you listen to me the worst year for your enemies is this year because they will see you somewhere they've never thought you ever be i did you hear what i said lizzie did you hear what i said this will be the worst year for anybody who doesn't like you. Ushers, can you distribute the emblem? Don't bring it today. It's said between now and Friday. Tell them, people need to sit there and write letters. And put a seed that touches you. It's not a joke. Do you have a need? He said, when you go first day, have you seen me doing something like this before? Never. No. Never. First day, this time we start. You have now until Friday. You can even use this one to wrap your cigarette. It's your problem. <laughs> but don't let your children come and suffer the same thing. Yes, after hearing all these dangerous messages. Prayer doesn't make anybody rich. Knowledge. Knowledge. All bread eaters in the church. Today your ministry ended. When you get to where you don't have paper seed, fine material seed, we don't joke. But the pastor prince went and plug the TV in his room. Monday morning, they rose up to come and watch television. Where's television? There's no television. The television is in church. Ay, ay, ay. Radical. The way some of you poverty has taken a konya. It's a two four type of poverty. Oh, bonus and so when your problem. The one in Fata Kashi and Tunasi. Thompson, do you have a need? Go and write God a letter. And tell him, I'm sowing this seed. He gave me the word, a seed for my need. If you have a need, you, you know what you are going to do. They said to me, don't be thinking that the church needs money. We just bought a new land without telling anybody in the church. Yeah. Where did we get the money from? I just announced you that we just bought a new land for yeah. Kappa. Yeah. Did we raise funds for it? Yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, Sempa. <laughs> I can manage the little, little you have been digging through some of these secret things I won't tell you. Before you see, ba-bam, ba-bam, ba -bam. But I'll be a wicked pastor if we don't show people what we are doing. That's when they begin to think maybe he went to Nigeria. Uh, communion or the BBS yeah. yeah. then I mean take a cram away. 
From today, you know something. You'll be a relaxed, rich person. Very relaxed. Do you have your seed for your need? Some of you, some girls who should marry you say no. Write your name on top of it and sow a seed. Jesus will appear to them. Man of God, I don't have a car. Okay. A seed for your need. Let me pray for you. The conference continues tomorrow. Sorry. Who will come tomorrow? No, yeah? Before we finish, something will change in your life. Yeah. I tell you. Nobody pray for me. Oh. I listen. I don't know the number of times. You know, I have a group of people who have made the message of... It's not people, uh, hypocritical people who are saying, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Listen to me. Whatever we don't preach in the church, heaven can never confirm. Thou confirm the words of thy messenger. That's why I told you about Prophet Kumui. The deeper life people were suffering. Kumui said he needed to learn the message of faith and learn signs and wonder because he saw that the church was hanging on one leg. So the Lord told him a false balance is abomination. You can't be too holy ghostic and be too poor stick. Lift that seed up. Somebody will say, I need another shot. Lord, this year by December, I must make my first international journey. You saw a seed. Stop praying. Oh, now you pray. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. There is a curse hanging somewhere. That's why your wishes are not coming to pass. Break this thing. This church will never stop building. We just finished one building at Onyanze. We'll dedicate it next two weeks Sunday. Church building and pastors, where pastors stay, less than six months. You know why? 2012, I saw a seed of 100 million when the church had no plot of land. And I told the Lord, this is my seed for my need. And, 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 they asked me, they said, what do you want? I said, I want the type of check that when it is time for us to build, we will build. Have we been struggling? Oh. Ay, 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 ay. A seed for my name. Father, thank you. Envelope is finished. Okay, tomorrow, buy an envelope and use a pen. Or tomorrow I will give you some. Tomorrow I will give you some. You have now up to Friday. Nobody will ask you anything anymore. Me? I know how this thing works. And I, so when I see pastors who are under pressure, I say, ah, come let us tell you this thing. You will die. Oh. How many prosperous people came to church tonight? Now look at my lips. Some of you between 9 and 12 midnight. Your first breakthrough will hit you. <laughs> With this thing in your hands. The angels have already seen you. The angels have already seen you. Some of you, whatever you are planning to give, God will give it to you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. I tell you here. Father, thank you. I release abundance. Into every house, into every family, into every individual life. Take it one, take it two, take it three. Now, anybody with an envelope, I command your bank account to respond to supernatural drop down. May your Momo account be noticed by the angels. Lift it up, lift it up. I say, may your Momo account be noticed by the angels. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Whoa. This is the year of abundance. This is the year of what? You know, when I gave my first card, I didn't know what I do. And I'll tell you, every month, people drop cars in the church. Last month, when I calculate four cars, no fundraising. What will talk to them? 
they leave their keys. They sow, I sow. Because what I want to see, I've not seen it yet. I will tell you what I want to see. Now listen to me. No amount of poverty in Ghana can enter your house. This is a covenant law. It can destroy every type of poverty. And tonight I declare abundance in your house, abundance in your office, abundance wherever you go. Hey, don't be surprised. Somebody will just greet you, open your hands, a khaki. Whoa. Somebody will say, Meet me here. When you go, a brown envelope. What is that? One acre of land. Lift your hands and thank him. Kile mahata ya no suya. Boro sekete rekata kata. Patani mi katale ikala suyala. Nembro boko sata. Broko te rekata. Thank him. And say, Holy Ghost, speak to me. This season of abundance, many things will change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank him. The Spirit of God is ministering. Let's close. Take your offering for tonight. Not the one I gave you. This one there is for assignment. Take your offering. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Tomorrow, don't miss it. Before the four days is over, people testify. I got a car. I got a land. I got a scholarship. I got this. I got this. There's going to be a breakout. Jesus. 17 people are here. You will just receive a phone call. Start to work. Start to work. Start to work. Amen. No interview. Start to work. Start to work. Start to work. How many of you have not received foreign currencies? Aye, aye, aye. Receive my portion. Oh, it's starting from a thousand dollars. Receive it. A thousand. Two thousand. It's going. It's going. Amen. It's going. Take it one. Take it two. I take it three. Receive. Take it four. I got a pastor there sitting there. Came here in one of those meetings. And then, as soon as he left, somebody dropped Mercedes Benz. He will talk maybe tomorrow. Lift your offering for tonight. Kaliko Tarakataya. Father, abundance, 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 abundance. Thank you, Lord. Yes, me sing a song. Moving in the speed of the Holy Ghost. Back your I am faithful. Hey. Poverty has died. I'm walking in abundance. I'm moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Let me again say. It's a new level. It's a new level. 
declare this thing blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I have one of my sons all the way from Virginia, USA, America. Pastor just landed yesterday. He invited me there. It was a very, 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 very wonderful. Man of God, it's a prayer bulldozer. Stand on your feet and lift it. Let's give him a very big holy hill welcome. Whoa! Good man of God. Many, many, many years ago. We have Prophet Mawuku also in the house. God bless you, sir, for coming. Um, uh, Pastor IEC is also there. I saw some dangerous testimonies. You started putting on the on the list, Charlie. The thing is flowing. And then my pastor for healing, Jesus Christ said, Woo! What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Okay, let's close. There are some people here who are not born again. I want to give you this opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Father, we thank you for bringing Pastor Dennis back to Ghana. What a blessing. Some people are here, they are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. Stop following all the sakawates. It doesn't work. Nobody can multiply sika rice for you. It is fake. Sika gari or sika rice or sika quicker oak. There's nothing like that. <laughs> give your life to Jesus. And he will give you a life full of abundance. Somebody is here, you want to say, Pastor, I'm not born again. But tonight, I want Jesus to give me his resources. Wherever you are, I want to see you. Lift your hands. I have a gift for you. Lift your hands. God bless you. God bless you. You are not born again. Or you used to go to church, you stop. Something happened. Something happened. Lift your hands very high. You want to give your life to Jesus so you can flow in this life of abundance. Let your hands go up, 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 up. At the top, at the down. Anybody? Or you used to go to church, you backslide it. You want to renew your commitment. Lord, I'm coming back home. If you are anybody like that, Stand on your feet and collect my gift now. Stand on your feet. Ushers, help them for me. Anybody? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Stand up wherever you are. Stand up and come to me in the front. God bless you, sir. Church, let's clap our hands bigger and bigger. This is why we are here. You are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus tonight. Don't just say, oh, the people are too many. You don't, it, it's not important. It's not important. It's not important. Some of you used to go to church. You stop. You are disconnected. Wow. God bless you. Let's keep clapping for them. Wow. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Michael, help him. Help him quickly. Quickly. Set the communion and everything. We are going home. God bless you, sir. Jesus brought three souls to church. Somebody holla hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, say this. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Open your mouth. Stand up. Stand up, boy. Stand up. You don't want to stand up? Your stomach. Okay, no problem. Lift your hands, lady. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Please forgive me my Please sins. Please forgive me my sins. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And personal, and personal Savior. Personal Savior. I'm born again. To I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I will serve you. I will serve you all the days of my all life. All the days of my life. Lord, Lord, fill me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Clap your hands. Follow Pastor George. There are some of you here. Today is the first time entering this auditorium. We always have a special gift for those that visit us. So, if today is your first time, just lift your hands. Ushers will give you a gift. First time. First time. First time. They are going to give you a testimony packet. They are going to give you a magazine full of teachings, testimonies, and then all the activities of the church you find it there. If your hands are up, if, if, if your hands lift it up, first time coming here. Wow. But all the first time I stand up, I want to pray for you. I want to bless you before you go home. Stand up, stand up. God bless you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bless them before because they came. Nobody visit Jesus and go back the same. Whatever they lack, supply. Those that are sick, heal them. Bless them and bring them back in case they have no place to go to church. In Jesus' name, I declare you blessed. Amen. Those of you who want to give your tithe, 
wherever you are sitting we are hitting the end of the month man of god this is my tithe all that god has blessed me with i'm sowing my tithe so my heavens will continually be open jump and run to the altar and drop your tithe and go back we are closing our time is up quickly god bless you tomorrow invite somebody it's going to get deeper and deeper tomorrow we're going to be talking about the mentality for abundance for you to walk in abundance you need to set your mind to think in a certain direction god bless you god bless you god bless you god bless you where is it you whilst you are standing in front wow he said the church has no clothes somebody just received hundred dollars he's sitting in the church somebody went and said hey take it you will get your own before midnight the dollars are flowing who wants a plot of land you are getting it this week this week this week some of you when i look at your fingers when you touch a cast here it will be very very powerful it's going to happen it's going to happen it's going to happen father we bless the communion by this communion we enter into prosperity covenant bless everyone for 24 hour financial miracle in jesus name we pray amen stand on your feet take your back don't take something that doesn't belong to you pack everything everybody your money on the floor pick it back into your pocket please pick it back pick it back pick it back into your pocket it has gathered the the prosperity grace put it in your purse put it in your bag put it in your pocket take your money back and pick it god bless you take your comment all the pastors are meeting our pastors from love of love abundance of favor it's a new level it's a new level what is abundance abundance from the root hebrew word shefa it means to abound it speaks of great resources it refers to plentifulness affluence lavishness infinity a great stockpile of wealth there's a love of get ready and expand your expectation for there is a sound of abundance that is about to hit the house you have been walking through the tenets of the supernatural and how to enjoy God's blessings. It's now time to be ushered into your season of abundance. It is great. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 9 says, The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your womb. The glory Holy Hill Chapel of Assemblies of God presents Season of Abundance, a financial breakthrough conference made just for you. We will meet from Tuesday, August 31 to Sunday, September 5, 2021 at the Faith Cathedral behind the Ghana Commercial Bank at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. Join us at 6 p.m. each night for the unadulterated word of God through his servant, Dr. Kwejo Bempa, for your season of abundance. Follow us on all our social media platforms at Holy Hill AG and on YouTube at Reverend Kwejo Bempa. It is your season of abundance.